Um, two things before we get started. I want to introduce these guys. Uh, this is right here. This one is Twister. And Twister has been with me for 20 years. And he is the master of this work. If, if you've not seen him working the room already this morning, just wait. He is... Um, he has a very uh, eclectic um, toolbox, and he uses those different tools at any given moment. Sometimes we have a hard time playing catch up with him. Um, he is in a lot of the stories in the book, um, so I just wanted you guys to, to see Twister kind of up in front in the podium. And this next little guy is Peanut or Little Bit, or Sweet Pea, uh, and she is brand new to our program. We've had her uh, less than three months, and she has fit in like you wouldn't believe. So uh, she's made her, this is her um, maiden voyage in the um, Egala model stuff out, outside of the farm. So um, I just wanted to introduce these guys before I got ready with the story. We're going to let them go back out and do what they do best and work the crowd and see, you know, see what comes up. <laughs> so, you know, Lynn and I have been doing these uh, Tales for the Trail um, little breakout sessions at the conference for several years. And, you know, the book was birthed from those Tales from the Trail and Twister always ends up a part of the Tales from the Trail. And he's a very um, large piece of the book. Um, he has many, many, many stories. And so um, we, we chose this one because, one, it's Lynn and I's favorite story, but also, two, it, I think it's kind of fitting because um, the, the topic is... Poop is a big topic in the story, and uh, we are all on alert on poop right now. You know, we've got the we've got the uh, diapers on them. We've got diapers inside the diapers to soak up the stuff. We've got people with buckets around. You know, we got the green machine. We're ready for poop. I just thought it was kind of ironic we chose that one. So. Um, this is a story that occurred uh, many, many years ago, um, about halfway through my journey with EGALA. Um, the therapist I was working with got a call from a family. A dad called and said, hey, um, my daughter has been referred to therapy from her guidance counselor at school. We'd like to come out and do family therapy with the horses at the barn. Very specific. He only wanted to do family therapy with everybody in the family. And at first that was like, okay, cool. We like to do family units, you know. What better way to get to the core of the problem is treat the whole family. So we make an appointment, they come out, and as soon as they pulled in, their car was like shimmering, you know, had this hue on it. They get out of the car, and they all look like they just walked off, you know, the Ralph Lauren cover of Ralph Lauren magazine, you know, impeccably groomed. Well, when they got up to the arena and we introduced ourselves and stuff, well, it shifted from Ralph Lauren to, have you guys ever seen the movie Stepford Wives? <laughs> okay. These folks were plastic. They were robotic talking. They moved robotically. Everything they did was kind of with no affect at all. Now, I don't know about y'all, but, you know, I'm full of affect. <laughs> so that was a little odd to me. <clears throat> so we just, after the introductions, and I was already rolling my eyes, my apostrophe S was humdinger in, buddy. <laughs> and as we... Ask them to go invite them out to go introduce themselves to the horses. They walk out all in a line, side by side, very robotically. 
Well, the horses come up and sniff them and then turn and move away from them as fast and as hard as they can, turn around and start snorting. Okay? This goes on through the whole session and the family just stands there. All right, it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> so it goes to the end of the session. We do not interject verbally at all. The horses kind of have them all kind of cornered. and They're in the middle, but the horses are at the very end of the perimeter looking towards. So we call them in and say, okay, let's check in. How, how'd it go out there? What was your experience like? And the only person that spoke was Dad. And he said, fine. <laughs> okay, we posed a couple other questions, and it was no, fine. So, all right, we're about out of time. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> so... We, we are saying, well, we're out of time for that today. And about that time, Mr. Twister enters the circle. He enters the circle, backs up, raises his tail, and he shits on Dad's shoes. <laughs> now, I'm a-hopping and a-popping like a bag of popcorn. I'm ready, I'm ready to share that spud by George. And I turn and I lay eyes on my therapist partner. <laughs> and she's going, <laughs> I'm dying here. I got, the, I got the best spud in the whole wide world. <laughs> the most unique spud. <laughs> and then I stop. And I look. Nobody moved, nobody said anything, no affect change, and the shit was still on Dad's shoes. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I'd shake that mess off. <laughs> and it was just there. So I winked at the therapist like, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> it's in your court now, <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> and so she followed up with, well, we'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah. I'm barely holding on here, people. <laughs> so the apostrophe S in me was, you know, I, I should have just went ahead and had the thing, you know, tattooed on my forehead because <laughs> I was wearing it proud. <laughs> so after the session, during that time, I had realized that the biggest unique was that discrepancy that showed up between how we would naturally react or respond to having poop on our shoes. <laughs> and there was a 15-year-old girl standing there that her dad, I, I have a 9-year-old and I have a 22-year-old, and they both would laugh <laughs> no matter what if I had poop on my shoes. So we processed, the, the therapist and I debriefed and everything, and that was her deciding factor is that there was something there. And if we applied too much pressure, they'd never be back. All right? So going back to that building rapport with our clients, that was, that was a piece that we were building in some rapport. Allow, holding the space. Not, not pushing them over the ledge. <laughs> Holding the poo, that's, <laughs> without getting any on you. <laughs> so we didn't get any on us, and they left with it. <laughs> so when they, I was like, you know, I don't think they'll be back. They, you know, well, sure enough, they came back. They had a different wardrobe from Ralph Lauren the next time they showed up. <laughs> they were still, you know, very much plastic, Stafford wife kind of family, Stafford family. 
And we picked up where we left off. That was the plan. Just, okay, so we left with you guys introducing yourselves to the horses. We're going to just go ahead and pick right back up there. Well, they went right back out. And it was not a replay with the horses. The people, it was exactly the same. The horses responded a little differently. They kept moving in and around, circling. To me, the metaphor, like circling the drain, you know. <laughs> but they, they kept circling. They started big, and they ended up small. That's all that happened, which was a lot. So we run out of time, and we say, okay, let's check in. And we check in, how was your experience? Fine. Dad's the only one that has spoken a word in two sessions, and it's been less than five words. So, getting ready to go. Here comes Twister. <laughs> kind of like here comes <laughs> uh, Bunny Foo Foo. So, here comes Twister. He splits the crowd. He splits it and comes through between daughter and mom, but then comes and lines up in front of dad, raises his tail, passes just a little gas, and drops another load <laughs> on dad's shoes. We had talked about our, our thought process enough to where I had control of my bag of popcorn. <laughs> Internally, I was still dying, but it was not reflecting non-verbally like it was the first time. And nobody said a word. No affect changed. Dad didn't shake the poop off his shoes. We ended the session. They left. And we, were, we, we had all kind of scenarios going in our heads. What if it's this? What if it's that? You know? And finally, you know, um, we were kind of talking about it. And sometimes we process in the arena, you know, and after the clients are gone. And the horses just left us. And I just had to, okay, we're, we're getting into our heads. And we're not staying clean. We're focusing on the, you know, what ifs rather than what now. And what now is the folks have had the same exact behaviors and movements for two sessions. The horses have shifted from being away on the outside looking in to circling. And they only circled one direction. Made it bigger and they were, the horses were head to tail. That's a shift. There is movement happening. Even though the people look like they're not getting it, not doing anything, movement's happening. So the fourth session, or third session, we come, and this time we had planned, you know, just maybe if this happens again, I'm not guaranteeing it's going to happen, I don't think it's going to happen, but if it does, we have a plan. So we're going to stop, and we are going to ask about the previous sessions, and we're going to do that, we're going to give ourselves a little bit more time. Thank God we did. They came in. Exactly the same. We picked up where they left off last week because they hadn't finished. They never looked towards us for, to, to say we're done. They were just deadpan. Third session, the horse's movement was much different. It was more lateral. And they kept going in between daughter and mom, back and forth, do a circle and come back and forth. So we, when we checked in, we said, okay, so... Tell us about your experience today. And uh, Dad said, it was fine. Okay. Well, that's all he got out before Twister came trotting through the group. <laughs> he went past us, stopped, backed up. He was a good 30, maybe even 40 feet from us. Started backing up. <laughs> Tail curled up over his back and farting the whole way. <laughs> now, I might be a little slow on things. 
But by this time, I know what's going to happen. There is not a doubt in my mind that the man's going to have some shit on his shoes. And he stands there. Just stands there. And sure enough, and it was a steamy pile this time. So, you know, I'm, I'm half hyperventilating and half, you know, like, cool. And then I get eye contact from my therapist, and she winks at me. And that, that is her equivalent of saying sick em to me, you know. <laughs> So as much as I wanted to say, man, you let that horse shit on your shoes three times. I had to reflect back on the model. (laughs) Clean language. How am I going to talk about shit on the shoes in clean language? So this is what I conjured up. I said, it's interesting that you guys are saying, or you said that things were fine. Well, we noticed that for three weeks in a row, someone has ended up with something from the horse on their shoes. (laughs) The daughter, who has not said a word... The entire time, drops her head, scoots maybe three inches from mom, and he's full. He's full. My therapist said, Excuse me, are you trying to to share something? And uh, mom turned around and said, You keep your effing mouth shut. Twister, Monger, and I had a Clydesdale named Clyde moved in between, created a barrier between mom and daughter. So the therapist said, so what do you need to keep your effing mouth shut about? And uh, the daughter said, He's full of shit. (laughs) And uh, then about the keeping the mouth shut again, and uh, the daughter said, ask her. She knows what he does to me. Okay? So, wow, that just happened in the arena. It was kind of comical, the the three weeks looking at it, and, and, but... it was the serious thing, the most serious disclosure that had happened for us as facilitators in with the horses. Um, you know, in this work, we are mandatory reporters. ES is included. We have a plan. We called DSS, which is our version of DFS. Um, they came out called the sheriff's department, made a report. They came out, talked to dad, arrested dad in the arena. And and dad still had the shit on his shoes (laughs) as he walked out of the arena. Mom was in complete denial. Uh, The daughter left with a paternal aunt that day from the arena, which it was a safe place for her. And mom has uh, is still in denial. Dad pled guilty, did his treatment. Um, She contacted us about five years later. Um, She has no contact with her mom. Her mom has, won't have anything to do with her. 
she wants to maintain some kind of um, contact with her dad, some type of relationship, and, and needed help figuring out what that looked like. She was feeling very lonely, but knew it, her relationship wasn't going to go back to where it was. But she wanted to know if he was dead or alive and that kind of stuff. And so she came back, and um, Twister and Monjur were her, uh, her go-to horses. And uh, Monjur would support her and come in when things got tough, and Twister would confront her and push her, which he does best. And I haven't heard any glass breaking table. No, no mayhem. Where are my four-legged mayhammers? Where are they back there? All right. So with that, that's a, a pretty stout, deep, kind of impactful story. And I hope you guys can um, gleam a little from that because it was hard as a facilitator. And it, but it was well worth it to be able to help this girl uh, get her out of that situation and then later maintain, she utilized, when things get rough, she calls to come to the barn and so to do a session. So, um, you know, that's one of the stories in the book. There's several others uh, about Twister and I think, what, 20 altogether or something, 20 or 45? 25 stories, oh. Um, and so, um, and that's paired with the Agala model and, and the different um, concepts and skill sets and standards of our model. So Lynn, Lynn and I have kind of paired my stories with how it applies to the Agala model. I hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys uh, learn from it and start creating your own stories uh, through this work and the magic of the Agala model. Thank you, guys.